In this week's video, we visit a gorgeous site situated on the shores of Loch Lomond, where there's boat storage for those inclined to launch their vessel. I managed to enjoy a swim in the beautifully tranquil waters of the loch and explore the surrounding picturesque countryside with spectacular views. But first, welcome to our channel. I'm Kath, this is Sue. We're enjoying our retirement, travelling with our two dogs, Archie and Fudge, whilst living full-time in our motorhome. Recently, Sue competed in the Great North Run, whilst I've been making the most of rivers for swims and hills for walks, so why not come and join us? Well, good morning everyone. Look at that view behind me. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? That, that is Loch Lomond. And we're on the east side at a campsite, I think it's called Cashel Campsite. Uh, which is along the shore of Loch Lomond. Now we arrived here last night, didn't do any filming yesterday because the weather was so rubbish. It, um, there was a storm blowing through. It actually wasn't as bad here. I think it's probably quite sheltered from um, probably from the hills all around. We did manage to get the dogs out for a little walk uh, just to stretch their legs. But unfortunately, we're leaving today. Uh, we're heading back uh, to the, the Troon area which is where we came from um, and that's really just uh, for family reasons so uh, sadly we're going to have to move on but in the meantime I'm just going to enjoy this view and maybe have a little bit of breakfast before we head off What a fabulous place for a campsite. Now this place wasn't even too expensive. There is actually a camping and caravan club site uh, on the road up here before you get to this point. And um, we looked at that, but that was really extortionate. And we are late September now. Whereas this is just over about, what was it? Just over 25 pounds a night. And that's with electric hookup. So not too bad, particularly when you consider location. And there's a lot of people I can see with soot boards on their, you know, on their roof racks and their vans. Uh, and if we were here for, if we weren't leaving um, this morning, uh, I got my wetsuit out last night and uh, started to just patch up some, some areas that needed a quick patch. Uh, and I, because I was going to swim today, it feels too cold to not be wearing a wetsuit. Um, so we'll definitely have to come back here. There's the toilet block. Look, they've got a wetsuit shower. There's boat storage here. I'm guessing there'll be some maybe seasonal picture people. I'll keep a boat here. And just coming up is the reception. There's actually a little little shop in here. It's got all the essentials. And what I noticed yesterday when we were out with the dogs, we're just adjacent to the West Highland Way and there's a sign inviting walkers to stop in and uh, fuel up here at this little shop. So I'm stood now right outside the entrance to the site and just in front of the reception and shop and as you can see they've got a number of little picnic tables set up here so you can come and sit out probably in nice weather but So you can come and sit out in nicer weather, get yourself a coffee or even an ice cream. So this footpath is part of the West Highland Way and uh, I've been watching um, a channel called Lost in Transit for a while and I know Tom is walking a full length of uh, Britain from John Groves to Land's End. And so it makes me want, I'm pretty sure he did the West Highland Way as part of the route. So it makes me think, well, Tom walked by here. I wonder whether he stopped in at the campsite for a coffee en route. Maybe even pitched his tent there. I don't remember his tent being there, but of course he doesn't pitch. He doesn't. He doesn't cover every single pitch that he does. Uh, 
Well, hi everyone. So it turns out that whilst we did leave this site earlier than expected, we came back. Hurrah! So today, uh, Fudge and I are going to head off out to the West Highland Way. There is a nature reserve not far from here, but hopefully, if I turn you around, I'm going to try to get us into those woods up there. I found a track that should be about a couple of hours walk. Now, it's very, very windy at the moment, and although I keep looking at the lake, loch, and I want to swim, it's actually not really good conditions really for swimming, so it's not that inviting. However, the wind is due to drop. So if it drops far enough and we get some calmer conditions later on this afternoon, then it's my intention to get the wetsuit out and have a swim. But let's see what happens first. In the meantime, Fudge and I are off for a walk. So that's where we're headed, up into that bit of forest. Well, can you believe it? We haven't been gone far and the sun's out. And the wind seems to have dropped. No, it's still windy, but not too bad. I'm not sure how long the sun will be out for, but I'm going to enjoy it whilst it's, whilst it's here. So I did map myself a route. And when I've come here, there's a big sign, and there are some routes. And actually, the one that I think I've mapped is called the Red Route. So I'm just going to go for it and follow the Red Route. Well, I've not been gone very long and already Loch Lomond and Scotland is serving up some luscious countryside. So I hope you can see this. After doing about a kilometre and a half through the woods, you come out onto this, um, this area here where you get this fabulous view of the absolutely magnificent Loch Lomond. Well, I'm starting to feel very overdressed, but every now and again, there's a little spot of rain. So I'm kind of in two minds, should I take my jacket off and then be ready to put it on a couple of seconds later? Or should I just take it off? I'll give it another few minutes because there's some clothes and some spots as we speak. For what is a relatively short and easy walk, I mean, I know everything's relative, you are treated with these absolutely stupendous views when you get to the top. Uh, you have to come off the path, but actually even the view is signposted. And I can see all around me. 360 degrees. It is absolutely fabulous. <laughs> now, for those of you who may have been watching a couple of weeks ago when I was walking over Loughrigg Fell in the Lake District, I feel like I might have stolen a little bit of Scotland. I'm going to turn around and shield you from the wind a little bit. So I feel like I, I may have stolen a little bit of Scotland because I used the phrase fan dabby dozy uh, and I couldn't remember where it came from. And quite a few people messaged me in various different ways to let me know. It was said by the Crankies. <laughs> now, that makes me feel like I've kind of stolen a little bit of Scotland and repositioned it somehow in Cumbria. So let's have a phrase for today. How about... Yabba dabba doo! Now I know that's not Scottish and it's not English. It's probably American. But it belongs to the Flintstones. And I like it for today. Way down there in the distance. I don't know if I'm pointing in the right place, but you can just see the campsite where we're staying. Absolutely on the edge of the loch. 
looks like there's some rain coming so I'm going to get off here where it's a little bit exposed and start the trek back down. Well folks we've made it back to camp uh, I'm just going to stop off at the little shop because Sue tells me that she wants a tin of chopped tomatoes if they have any. So, so we've woken up this morning to an absolutely brilliant morning as in it's not sunny but it's nearly October not quite but the loch is absolutely still now as you can see I'm stood right on the water's edge and if you'd been here yet even yesterday it was just so choppy out here but it's almost like a mill pond today because there's absolutely no wind whatsoever which just makes it idyllic Look at this. So from yesterday when it looked like there was some kind of, it looked like it was a sea yesterday and there were waves and crashing up against the, uh, the shore. Today, a totally different picture. It's not even my face, it's not as cold as the sea was in February. Uh, when, I, when I swam down on the south coast, Jurassic coast, not that cold. I'm a long way out from shore actually, if I turn around, quite a long way out from shore now. I've only just gone out of my depth. But look, if I spin round, <laughs> look at that scenery all around. How perfect is that? I tell you what, this wetsuit is so buoyant. I can just literally hang in the water. My feet can't touch the bottom here, but they're not moving. Normally I have my feet kind of just doing a little bit of a breaststroke swirl, but they're not moving and I can just hang in the water. I just feel like twirling around in the water. <laughs> little spin. Hey. <laughs> Making you dizzy.